little over a year ago, Tannehill was traded along with a sixth round pick for a fourth and a seventh round pick. By this math, his trade value was beneath a fourth round draft pick. Can you imagine what a franchise quarterback like, say, Russell Wilson would be worth? We're talking multiple first round draft picks and maybe a washing machine. Ryan Tannehill's football career had one foot in the grave. Miami thought Fitzpatrick was the better Ryan. Ryan Tannehill boarded that plane to Tennessee knowing what was coming for him. He was backing up Marcus Mariota. It would be the best thing that ever happened to him. Ciao amigos, welcome to Take Some Fuego. Today we're going to take a look at where the Tennessee Titans rank this year after being one of the four best teams last year. Namely, is Ryan Tannehill more Ryan Mallett or Ryan Reynolds? Mr. Tannehill must have been pretty pissed about his fourth round draft pick value. Oh yeah, he must have thought to himself before the game, I'm worth at least a third. Then he went onto the field and performed as well as he possibly could have through 10 starts. Tannehill scored 22 touchdowns and gave a passer rating of 117.5. Hold on, just to emphasize how insane that is, this is the fourth best season all time as of passer rating. The only NFL quarterbacks who had a better passer rating were Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning, and obviously, Nick Foles. But before Tannehill took over, they just weren't that great. Marcus Mariota was Marcus Mariota. He led the Titans to 2-4 and four, and Vegas had them pegged as a 500 team before the season started. Tannehill improved the team to 7-3 after he took over, clinching their playoff berth when all the odds were against them. Then, they beat Brady and Belichick, the two goats in the sport, the rising Ravens and Lamar, and lost to the Chiefs where they put up some decent O, but the Titans were lacking in D that game. Tannehill just Bruce Willis this thing. Thank goodness Mike Vrabel didn't have to cut off his own penis. Derrick Henry certainly did his part, he averaged about as much yards after contact as the average running back averages per carry at 4.18. If you counted only his yards after contact, Henry would be fourth in the league in rushing. When all was said and done, he led the league in rushing, rushing touchdowns, yards per game, and yards per attempt among running backs who started over one game. To say he was the best running back in football last year is an understatement. Even in new metrics that are just being invented, Derrick Henry is dominating the league. In a new advanced metric released by NFL.com, a new stat is expected rushing yards and rushing yards over expected. Derrick Henry ranks first in rushing yards over expected. I know what you straw men are thinking, Derrick Henry was a beast, Tannehill wouldn't be anything without him. Yeah, whatever straw man, Tannehill didn't need him. Without him in week 16 against the Saints, Tannehill threw for 3 touchdowns and had a 133.6 passer rating. We have to imagine a possibility where Tannehill regresses back to the mean. Miami thought he was a 4th round draft pick value for a reason and were willing to move on to Ryan Fitzpatrick instead. So what the hell happened to Miami? Tannehill did have some weapons depending on the year. Kenny Stills, Jarvis Landry, Devontae Parker, and for years he seemed he was just good enough to keep his job, but not good enough to do anything meaningful in the league. Why? Well, for one thing, the Dolphins' old line sucked. Tannehill quickly became one of the most sacked quarterbacks in the league. In fact, eight years into his career, he has been sacked 279 times. The most sacked quarterback of all time is Brett Favre who played 20 years and was sacked 525 times. If Tannehill played 20 years and recorded the same number of sacks per year that he has, he would have been sacked 698 times. Now behind the Tennessee offensive line, which has been much stronger than the Miami one, Tannehill seems to be tapped into his full potential. From 2018 in Miami to 2019 in Nashville, Tannehill improved his yards per game by 48.6, improved his passer rating by 25 points, and improved his completion percentage to above 70. Of course, Tannehill's production dropped off in the playoffs, but he didn't necessarily need to step up in their two wins. He threw for just 88 yards against the Ravens, what? but 
being their leading most of the game, he only passed the ball 14 times. Derrick Henry, on the other hand, carried the ball 30 times for nearly 200 yards. The more concerning game was New England, where Tannehill threw for only 72 yards on 15 attempts with one interception. Henry was still reliable at nearly 200 yards rushing. This was more of a defensive battle with both Brady and Tannehill finishing the game with a QBR under 40. And the Titans remain mostly intact. The offense is coming back with 10 of their starters. The one player who left, right tackle Jack Conklin, was addressed with a first round pick, Isaiah Wilson. These starters brought the Titans to number three in weighted DVOA last year. Tannehill and Henry both got new deals. Life appears like it will be good in Tennessee. Then how do we explain these odds in Vegas? Tennessee made the AFC Championship game last season, and Kansas City and Baltimore and San Francisco have better odds than them. If that makes sense, the two Super Bowl teams in Baltimore with Lamar Jackson with a season under his belt, and then New Orleans, they're still a great team, and Tampa Bay, I think I would still take Tennessee. And Dallas? Alright, get the fuck out of here. I believe Tennessee has a good shot next year, apparently Vegas disagrees. In fact, they think Tennessee is the 15th most likely team to win the Super Bowl next year behind such teams like Dallas and Buffalo. As of today, if you bet $1 on the Titans winning the Super Bowl, you win $30. If the season was simulated 30 times, would the Titans win one of them? I would like to think so. However, there is a definite possibility that the Titans regress back to their mean. And the team never seemed that special all the way up to the playoffs despite Tannehill and Henry's unreal play. The Titans ranked middle of the pack on defense last year in several categories, but still were 12th in scoring defense out of 32 teams. And if Mike Vrabel cuts off his own penis, who knows how high the Titans could rise. Alright, for those who don't know, Mike Vrabel said he would cut off his own penis to win a Super Bowl. That's the type of dedication I would want in my NFL head coach. That is another factor I don't think Vegas is factoring in. How many head coaches would cut off their own penis? I mean, would Belichick? No one so far is even offered, except Mike Vrabel. Tannehill replaced Mariota in the second half of week 6. He went 13 for 16 with 144 passing yards. Mike Vrabel's on the sideline thinking, I could get used to this, and maybe I should cut off my penis. In March 2019, Tannehill is worth a 4th round draft pick. He just signed a 4 year, $118 million contract. The difference a year, an all star running back, and a good offensive line makes. The Titans head into the 2020 season, much of it hinged upon how good Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry will be. For more videos, including The Real Reason, which is a backup quarterback and a health guru that forced Tom Brady off the Patriots, check out the video on the screen, and be sure to subscribe or try to tackle Derrick Henry. Off the plane. Yeah, shop a hope it